Coming up, it's the debut of the CTV High School Basketball Game of the Week. First up, the boys of St. Francis try to stop the high-flying Aptos Mariners. And in the nightcap, defending SCCAL Tournament champion St. Francis tries to knock off a tough Aptos team at home. It's the CTV Game of the Week, and it starts right now. Welcome to the beautiful gym here at Aptos High School, just a little bit south of Santa Cruz for the CTV debut of the Basketball Game of the Week. With Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartzen. Kurt, for these two teams, St. Francis and Aptos, two very different offenses. Completely different offenses. Aptos says they like to do the tempo thing. They like to run the ball up and down the floor. They haven't met a three-point shot that they're afraid of to try and take. On the other hand, the Sharks, this is going to be their third game so far this week. They like to slow the ball down as they did against uh, Scotts Valley last week. So for the uh, Sharks to do anything, they just have to stay in control, use that shot clock, all 30 seconds of it. And, Kurt, let's look at the last time these two teams hit the court. And it illustrates the point exactly. More than 80 points for Aptos, less than 40 for St. Francis. Yeah, exactly. As I said, St. Francis went up to Scotts Valley on the Falcons. 36-33 was the final score. Aptos was over at San Lorenzo Valley and hung a quick 80 on them. But also when they played against Harbor, Aptos hung an 80 on them. So they can score, folks. They can score. And real quick, for St. Francis to keep this one close, what do they have to do? They're just going to have to make sure that, one, control the boards. Limit the number of shots that Aptos can get. In other words, one shot per time. Keep the touches out of the hand of victory because he loves to shoot the ball. He's also the point guard, and that's really hard to do. But the other one is get Harrell off the boards. And we saw him last year in the playoffs. He's a beast on the boards. So coming up next, game one of our doubleheader, the boys of St. Francis and Aptox here on the Game of the Week on CTV Sports. Thanks for joining us in our CTV Game of the Week debut here in basketball. Great doubleheader on hand, CTV Sports is a presentation of Community Television in Santa Cruz County, a nonprofit membership organization serving county residents by providing education and tools to access media. Visit us at communitytv.org. This presentation is made possible in part by the support of Cruz IO Internet, Santa Cruz County's largest independent internet service provider, offering high-speed wireless internet, a co-location data center, and flexible workspaces with 10 gigabytes of fiber internet. Details online at cruzio.com. Also, the Santa Cruz Diner. At Santa Cruz Diner, you'll always find great food at reasonable prices. Family-owned and operated since 1998, Santa Cruz Diner is kid-friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz, on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And by Watsonville Tire. Happy holidays from Watsonville Tire and Loop, where you'll find reliable customer service at respectable prices. In Watsonville at 127 Lee Road, just north of Peach Street, offering discounted tire sales and repairs from semi truck, audio, SUV, and tractor tires. Great savings on all major brands and satisfied customers. That's our goal at the Watsonville Tire and Loop. If you got wheels, Watsonville Tire has got you covered. Both these teams warming up in this matchup of styles. We mentioned St. Francis. They like to play defensively. We're looking to see SCCAL standings, and uh, these two teams are fighting for that number four spot. Yeah, they're going to continue to fight for it all the way through. You can see right at the top, Scotts Valley very good. Santa Cruz also just outstanding. Down on the bottom, you've got Harbor and San Lorenzo Valley. They're going to have a tough time this year, but they are always rebuilding. Yeah, and it's going to be a very tight race at the top. We look at the Sentinel power pull, and uh, these teams, once again, are right next to each other fighting for that number three, maybe number four spot in the SCCAO. As we see Watsonville in there, they're not in the SCCAO. No, they're not, nor is Monta Vista or Pajaro or Kirby Prep. But these two teams, you know, height-wise, you look across the board, they're about the same height. They've got similar playing uh, players as far as ability is concerned. It's just the style of play is so much different. If you let Aptos get out of the gates and those thoroughbreds start to run, they're going to be very, very tough to beat. So we look at the St. Francis Sharks and We'll go to their keys for their head coach, Ed Kelly. Ed Kelly says well, we're going to handle the, handle the pressure, and they're going to get a lot of that one. Are you going to make some shots? Cover the three rebound. They were going to have to make sure that they really get 
all of those classic rebounds. We talked to Coach Kelly before. We said, you know, what are what are some of the things you're going to be looking at, some of the challenges you're going to have going into playing these Aptos Mariners? Yeah, well, Aptos is obviously one of the better teams in the league. They've got some good outside shooters, a lot of size. Uh, it's a long week for us. It'll be our third game of the week. So we haven't really gotten to preparing for them yet. But when we do, we'll try and deal with their combination of size and strength inside and outside. Joey does a good job with them. They're always one of the better teams in the league. And with our young kids, we'll see if we can compete. And there's Coach Kelly, and he talked about Joe Smith. Here are his three keys to this contest. Joe says we're going to control the pace of the game, and his is going to be an up-tempo type of, type of deal. Also, play smart defense. They want to keep the hands, the ball out of the hands of Will Burkett. He had 15 points against Scotts Valley last week. He's a very good shooter, good ball handler, and control the boards. And with Harrell, they've got one of the better rebounders in the league. And before we got into this game, I had a chance to talk with Coach uh, Joe Smith and his dad, and I said, so what are your challenges? What are the challenges you see coming they up Francis, against somebody like the St. Francis? They execute very well offensively and defensively. They compete very hard. They're well coached. So we know we're going to have to play well for 32 minutes to give ourselves a chance to win. And yeah, there's Joe Smith, uh, where he'll patrol the sidelines for this game, and uh, his team is a team that just likes to go up and down the court. So it should be a lot of fun to see them take on a St. Francis team that's going to try to clamp them down defensively. St. Francis and Aptos, the big game coming up next here in the CGV Game of the Week. Back here for the CTV Game of the Week, Aptos and St. Francis here on CTV Sports. Starting line up being announced, we start off giving you the St. Francis team. One guy to look out for, Kurt, on this offense. That's Will Burkett, Burkett over there, number five. We got Matthews, Salcedo, Figueroa, Devo Gallery, and those five guys. It's going to look like a hockey game at various points in time. There's a lot of line change because they played a lot. For the Aptos Mariners, Parker Victory, he's the guy that you're going to want to see shoot the ball. Harrell is right in the middle of the big center. Montoya, very active forward. And Sagoda, also a very active forward. So that's your five for both of these ball clubs. We're ready to throw this ball up in the air. Curtis Gomez, one of the referee right in front of me with the basketball. And LeVon Dowie, he will be on the far side. So we're ready to play ball, Tim. Yeah, St. Francis will be going left to right in their road. Maroons, Aptos here at home will be going right to left. So we start this one off with the Sharks moving it left to right. We mentioned they're not a very huge lineup. Burkett is listed as a guard. He's 6'4", the tallest player they have going. And he dumps it down low for Figueroa, who tries to look. They're going to try to spread and shred. Off balance, 18-footer clanks off the iron for Matthews. And a long rebound. Harrell lost the ball, though. And on the other side already comes Burkett all the way to the rack. Off balance, it's no good. And a rebound to Montoya. You can see the pace already picking up. That was a steal on the other end by Salcedo. We got the ball back over. And that's what the Sharks are going to have to do is limit the touches to the Aptos Mariners. Now they're in their office. See a lot of motion working around man on man. And somebody got loose underneath. Montoya. And Montoya lays it up and in. 2-0. Early lead for the Mariners. Aptos starting with a full court press. Little UCLA type of a zone. You're just pressuring the ball, trying to intercept the pass. Trapped in the near side, they'll release in the middle. No good on the off balance for Matthews. And a loose change filled up by Sakota. Sakota, nice swing player at 6-2. Good size on the outside. And up top to Montoya. Right wing, victories three on the way. Front iron, no good. He had seven of those threes in a huge 33-point win over SLV earlier this week. Well, you can see he's not afraid to shoot the ball. Quickly down the floor, they want to get the ball all the way in, clear out that center post. And now the, the Sharks are finding themselves standing around those a little bit too much. They have to have movement on this man-to-man -man type of a defense. It looks like Aptos has switched into a nice little soft man-to-man. -man. Short jumper from the near wing for Degvoga Larry, and on the other side, Harrell has it to the far wing. Aptos here at home, they are two and one in the league. St. Francis is one and two. They're four and five in the league, and four and five in the Santa Cruz Sentinel Power Rankings. Notice how quick Aptos moves the ball around. Always looking for a shot. Ball's going to be out of bounds. The Sharks are going to be able to get that ball. But that time, 
Tim with St. Francis did is they did a nice job of trying to box out in the center. Aptos will crash those boards. And you can see it right now. Montoya's is they're going to take that nice, soft, little man-to-man -man slash zone. Not going to really force them to put the ball up. And we got a whistle on the far side. Stepped out of bounds. Yeah, it looked like Salcedo to the far sidelines just touched the line. You see Ed Kelly, and when he gave us his starting lineups, he listed Will Burkett as tallest player as a point guard. So you'll see number five on your screen play a little bit of point forward. Seems like all five of these St. Francis players, though, can bring it up the court. Left wing three for Matthews is off the back iron, no good. And the rebound to Aptos. Long pass all alone, Danny. Victory left hand layup good, 4 0 Mariners. That's what Aptos likes to do transition basketball. They get that one victory with the steal. Gets it tipped away, but Aptos is going to continue to fight the ball up in the middle. And Sakota was fouled on the floor. The call made by Curtis Gomez. About three minutes in, it's a four point lead for Aptos. He watched this thing, the fight underneath. Put that ball up, and he gets kind of gets stuck right up in there. Ball's released up top to Sakota. Now well, they've got a full shot clock to work with. Harrell underneath lays it up and in. Well, remember last time we were here for an Aptos game, it was uh, uh, Harrell just went off in the SCCAL championship, lost that game, but he ended up with a huge double double. Yeah, and he's coming off a double double from last week, too. So he's somebody that everybody's got to deal with throughout the season. Nice rebound for Wells. He caught the ball at its highest points. Victory, no look pass for Harrell. He loses this ball out of bounds. Yeah, Aptos last season. They finished their SCCA season before that CCS right here on the home floor, falling to Santa Cruz. Do you think Santa Cruz coming into this year, uh, Kurt, is maybe the favorite in this league? There's no doubt about it. They've got a lot of people back, Jonah Hodges being one of them, and he's quicker than you can get. And just talking to Domhoff and everybody else, they've got a lot of horses to get down there. Underneath St. Francis with some trouble, and the shot is too strong for Matthews. They've still yet to score. Long pass, a little bit too high for Well. We mentioned he had a very good game as well, and that 87 54 victory over San Lorenzo Valley 15 points and seven rebounds. And he's a he's a, just a sophomore. Great kid to have on your ball club, says Coach Smith, and he's enjoying coaching him. All the way down the rack is Figueroa. He's double teamed to the far side. Burkett collects it. But he's blocked by Harrell, who just kept himself up, but trying to bring the ball up. It's stolen all the way down to the rack, laid up off the glass and good for Jacob Galera, and it's a 6-2 game. And that is one of the things Coach Smith's calling. We got a timeout. He's, here's what Jack Smith, the assistant coach, the father, is going to say, or Joe Smith, the son, the head coach. Got that, folks? Don't have to force the ball up. And that's what Harrell was trying to do. He got his pocket picked. Down the other end, they picked up two points. So this day in history, July 13, 1962, Wilt Chamberlain of the Philadelphia Warriors scored his NBA record 72 points against the Chicago Packers. The Warriors went on to win that game 135 to 117. Did you ever know that the Packers actually played basketball, Tim? I did not know that. So Chicago's been home of three different NBA teams that I know of. The Chicago Stags in the 40s, then it was known as the uh, Basketball Association of America, then the Packers, and now uh, the Chicago Bulls. How about that? Will Chamberlain ended up, still has the record for points in the game. It's 100, though, not 73. That one rims out. It was collected to the far sidelines by Sakota, but stolen away by Figueroa. St. Francis runs the floor. Watch St. Francis are going to look inside. They've got it. Nice job on a nice little pick. Matthews with the layup. Matthews continue to just run the floor. And that's what they want to do. Coach Kelly says run the offense, run the offense, look for the open man. They did it really well that time. Ball's worked around the arc. Sakota to the left wing. Back up top for Danny Victory. Had 25 points, five assists, three steals against SLV. Harrell is fouled underneath the basket. It'll be two free throws. And the foul is against Will Burkett. Burkett with that one said he got him on the arm. Looked like a pretty clean block. There's just too much arm on that one. He was also getting pummeled pretty good underneath. So that foul could have been called against any, any three of the Sharks. Harrell will miss the first free throw. 
I always, you know, you get up to the charity stripe and they say it's going to be the easiest shot you're going to have all day, but you're 15 feet away. Everybody's looking at you. You just sometimes just don't get that shooter's rhythm. Harold misses both the shots. Here's your guard, Burkett, the biggest man on the floor. Remember Magic Johnson? He used to be one of the big guys to do that one. Burkett just takes it right to the rack, makes a beeline, his first two. And a 6-0 run that started this game from Aptos is responded to with a 6-0 run for St. Francis. Well, Aptos has shot themselves in the foot here in the first quarter by too many turnovers, too tiny times forcing the ball. Burkett with a nice rebound on a miss by Harrell. And Burkett playing that point forward position. A little Scotty Pippen-esque, you mentioned Magic Johnson. Turnaround spin move for Matthews, way too strong. Harold doing his typical good job sweeping the boards. Watch Aptos, they're gonna set out high, they're gonna try and move somebody down underneath the paint. And Harold was unguarded as he went in and laid it up and good. Aptos retakes the lead eight to six. Tim, if you're a big man, that's what you wanna be able to do, slide up and down from the base up to the free throw line, but always be moving Head looking to the ball, hands up, always calling for it. Burkett, hesitation dribble drive. Nice cut in the middle of the lane by Matthews. He was hacked and he puts it up and good. As Andrade, who just came into this game, hacked him on the arm and we could hear that courtside. That was a big loud thud. Watch Matthews, he comes from the top on a nice angle, season angle, season lane that he can come through. Does it very well and his hands are up. He's looking right at the passer, good pass. And Matthews does a nice job of being very demonstrative and very strong going to the basket. Matthews, very nice free throw. And credit to our audio team back in the truck. You can hear the nice swish for the free throw. We've got a great crew, including those guys in the truck. Our producer, director, <laughs> Craig Jetson, well, who I will hear throughout tonight in my ears. St. Francis takes their first lead of the game. Underneath Montoya misses it all the way down the court. This one is laid up and good, and Figueroa on a great feed from John Russo who just came into this contest. 11 to three, St. Francis is playing their style so far. Ball release to Andrade up the right arc. Harrell drives, terminates. Left free throw line extended, swings right side for victory. Back to Harrell. St. Francis in a soft man-to-man -man Harrell, spin move, nice dish off the left side. It's laid up and good for Well. Burkett loses that ball for a moment to Harrell. Nice pass out, victory. Harrell takes it all the way down to the hoop with the fouls. He falls down. Aptos starting to pick up the rhythm and the pace of the game. He's just Harold doing a nice job. As you watch him come up, or he takes that pass, watch the determination. One ball, one on the floor, two big aggressive strides into it, and he lays it up and in. He's hit hard, but that great determination and being able to get up high on that glass gets that ball down in the bucket. Harold continues his troubles to free throw line, 0 for 3. Under a minute remaining, first quarter of this game of our Eight quarters we'll see in the doubleheader. All alone, straightaway jumper. Good for Trey Yee. His first touch of the ball, 13-12. The lead retaken by St. Francis. Well, well thought about an NBA range three. It definitely, and you know what? These kids work very hard throughout the entire year. A lot of them play AAU basketball, so they never really get out of basketball shape. Figueroa with the shot clock dead and a wasted possession. He to fired that one behind Russo. Joe Smith over there on the far sidelines for Aptos High School. Have it telling Jake, you know, kind of sit down there for a little bit. Pace? No, he's not. I thought he was coming out. And nobody knows what's going on. Now we're going to get the full change in. Substitution for St. Francis, Matthews checks back in, replacing Burkett. Burkett with one foul already. Good idea to take him out for one defensive possession. I think so, you know, give him that, give him that little extra time to rest. They really want him in for offense. Harold, the handoff up top for Parker, who just saves the over and back, but he gives it right to Matthews. All the way to the hoop, and he's blocked. 
rejected by Montoya, and that's how the first quarter will end. 13-12, St. Francis leads Aptos here in our CTV Game of the Week. Fun first quarter. Both of these teams really sizing each other up. I'm very surprised to see the Sharks come out with that aggressive pace that they've had. So I want to thank a couple of the people that have made this possible. First of all, Santa Cruz Diner. You see, it's open 24 hours. At Santa Cruz Diner, you'll always find great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1988. Santa Cruz Diner is kid friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz. On the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And by Watsonville Tire. Happy holidays from the Watsonville Tire and Lube, where you'll find reliable customer service at respectable prices. In Watsonville, 127 Lee Road, just north of Beach Street, offering discount tire sales and repairs for, for semi-truck, audio, SUV, and tractor tails. Great savings on all major brands and satisfied customers. That's our goal at Watsonville Tire and Lube. If it's got wheels, Watsonville Tire has you covered. See some of our next games coming up. Harbor and Scotts Valley, that'll be a tough game. We mentioned perhaps the, the battle for first between Santa Cruz and SoCal. It's going to be a good one. Stu Walters has got a good ball club with the Knights. And, of course, Domhoff is always tough with those Santa Cruz Cardinals. Left wing, three on the way. Front iron, no good. Just a little bit too short for Ryan Parker, one of the gunners off this bench for Aptos. And I think one of the themes for this game is Ricky Carrera just comes into the game. He holds the ball. But I, I think Aptos is a little bit deeper bench. They do have a deeper bench, and they will throw it up from anywhere inside the half-court line. One thing Parker's going to have to do next time he shoots it is follow his shot. Matthews gave up the dribble in the middle of the floor. Burkett up the right wing. Eight on the shot clock. Burkett, rise and fire, banks it in from 18. Big smile on his face. I don't think he called bank. Doesn't matter. Three-point lead for St. Francis. Yeah, I'll tell you, if you call bank or not, if you call bank, you get another shot. You get another point on that one. Victory. Left wing. Harrell shows his range. A perfect three for Jake Harrell, who has nine in the first quarter in a minute. Well, he's a type of a ball player that can take it inside and score. We saw that. Also from outside, he, he's not afraid to shoot the ball. He's very aggressive on the offensive end and defensive end. Watch him play defense. Burkett over to the right side, and he's a little bit short. Parker all the way back as Aptos moves it quickly. Harold, the same spot he hit the three. The tie this one up at 15 in the second quarter. Victory out on top, saying slow this pace down. Let's get our big man to start to move. Extra pass, Parker open three, back iron. And Burkett tips this one to himself for the rebound as he fights off Harrell for it. Well, one thing you've got to remember as a rebounder, if you get a long shot, that means the rebound could be a little bit longer on a bounce so you can be farther away from the rim. Carrera, one on four, is fouled as he went up. And it'll be two free throws for Ricky Carrera, the 5'9 guard. Watch Ricky comes right on in against the treetops. He realizes that he's got a great shot of getting fouled because he's coming in and the defense really has not had an opportunity to get set. Carrera misses the first free throw. I think something he did well there too is so many times you see a guard come into the lane and he'll terminate his dribble and that's probably the worst thing you can do. Oh, that's the kiss of death. Now you're in there and you've got nowhere to go and everybody's just standing on top of you with their arms out waiting for you to do something. Carrera makes one out of two. You, you don't like his odds one on four, but he can get the free throws, and he got a point out of it, and a lead for uh, for uh, St. Francis, 16-15. Well, you, you like those slashing guards that are coming in, because that'll get the big men to sl uh, slide on over, and you can get a blocking foul call. Sakota foot in the line, jumper's no good, but Harrell scoops it in. He's in the double figures with 11. 17-16, Aptos. Jake just having a great day on the offensive end of the court. And he's doing pretty well on the defensive end, cleaning that glass up too. Burkett over to the left wing. Three on the way, short for Russo. And Russo tried to follow his, his shot, but committed an unnecessary foul. Well, Russo did the right thing. You follow your shot, but then you've got to have the smarts to realize when that rebounder hauls off and gets it, what he's going to be able to do. That's his first personal and the fourth team foul. Victory pushed out 35 feet. So they'll work it around the arc. Victory's been held to just two points, but 
You guard Pixie Hart, you leave a Ryan Parker up, and Parker buries a three. Biggest lead of the game equaled for Aptos at four. One on one, sort of a nice little man to man. Parker on Burkett. Let's see how much movement goes underneath. They're just trying to clear the lane out for number five. Let him work. Up and under move, no good for Burkett, but he's fouled. Parker, who goes 6 1, Burkett had three inches on him, and he used them. Kind of an NBA style offense, if you will, team. Clear the decks, move everybody out. I've got the ball this time. Let me go one on one because I can beat my man. Two free throws for Burkett, and he makes the first. You can see Coach Kelly is going to be substituting his men quite liberally to keep all of those fresh legs on the floor all the time. Just a 11-man team. 11-man team, that means they've got 11 less than the football team had by the time the season was over with. Perkett makes both. He's got four in this one. Two-point game. Halfway through the second quarter. Victory, open three left wing. That one flanks off the right side of the rim. Nice screen by Sagoda, but no avail. Victory had a nice look at it. It takes a while for these long range bombers to sort of get that shooter's touch. Figueroa banks it in. His second basket. We're tied at 20 in the second quarter. St. Francis is attacking the key. They spread it out, they run people through at angles. They clear out and they get nice passing zones. Harrell, spin move, that one will roll in. That was some nifty moves, and Harrell has 13. He continues to impress me. It is nice move, aggressiveness, able to, just to find just a little daylight, get his body through it. Figueroa having a tough time getting the ball up the floor. Aptos back up by two. Not going to be anywhere close to a 10-second call. I mean, getting it over, then, then a good idea by Ed Kelly. He sends that with eight seconds left. You're at your own free throw line, usually not a good a good sign. No, and that's one of the great things when you're the coach and the official is sitting right in front of you. You can holler timeout. Curtis Gomez, the official over on that side, heard the timeout call, gave the timeout. And that's a great bit of coaching by Ed Kelly, veteran, tremendous basketball coach. There's a nice little toss in, using the body, and then being able to feel where your defender is and then spin off to one side and make the bucket. One, two, three, start to Matt. Just heard a little bit of Ed Kelly. And yeah, that move from, from Harrell is one of those that you just practice it when you're alone uh, at home shooting hoops. Just spin, he knew exactly where he would, just threw it right into the rim. Yeah, you know where you are, you got a feel where the defender is, take the defender down to the baseline, spin back in, and shoot the shot. Double team of Burkett up top turned into a triple team and ends up with a wide open 12 footer left side. Carrera is first field goal. 22 all. Twos are wild here in the second quarter. Tim, what I'm impressed with is that extra pass. You alluded to it a little bit before. Sakota near wing three is no good. Aptos has been more effective when they've gone down inside. That three-point shot's not there. But knowing Coach Smith and being around the game a couple of years, you're going to keep shooting. Because sooner or later, you start to develop that rhythm and that touch. You may want to bring it into more of a mid-range jump than the long-range bombs. Popping open was Russo, but he's not going to take the three. They put Montoya on Burkett. Wild fadeaways, no good. Rebound finally grabbed by the Sharks. And they'll reset their offense with a new shot clock. Good hustle by Figueroa to get that loose ball. And yeah, now you've got a long shot clock to work with, but they just did not get a percent of shots. Here come the Mariners. Montoya revs up the engines all the way to the hoop, and he'll lay it in. So there's that transition game that makes Aptos so deadly. Aptos regains the lead, 24-22. Just under three minutes to go in the first half. Near side, open three, just too strong. And the Sharks give up the rebound. Mariners, Harrell all the way to the hoop. No good. Blocking foul, tough one to take for Carrera as he ends up on his back. Well, again, you've got Harrell that grabs the rebound and he did a nice job. He realized it was a long range shot, hit the back of the iron, it's gonna get a long bounce out, so he moved out, got it. And then with his speed and ball handling ability, brought the ball down the floor. And he realized he had a chance to get at least the layup 
if the defense doesn't collapse on him, which they did, so now he has to work for it with the two free throws making the first one. That's Harrell's first make out of four attempts. Three-point lead with Harrell pouring in 14 of the 25 for Aptos. Second free throw he is also good. Well, <laughs> Jake Harrell, every time we've had him here on CTV, he's had a huge game. He had 19 and 10 last time against SLV. I mean, he's making a, a little bit of a case for player of the year. He is, and we just started the year. I mean, these guys have been going for about 15 games so far, but he's, the last couple games, he's really stepped up and played some great basketball. Just the fourth league game for each of these teams. St. Francis is one and two, two and one Aptos. And the up and under move, the shot is good for Yee. The matchup of styles, Aptos, who likes to go up and down the court. St. Francis, who last time out lost a game, 36-33. Well, St. Francis knows how to play defense. Right now they're trying to front Hurl, but he's not, they're not doing a very good job. Montoya, blocked shot underneath. A nice block from Matt Clifton, but the rebound from Montoya is sliced in, and Justin Montoya with six. Four-point lead from the Mariners. All the way down the court, Figueroa finds an open Burke. It gives up the three, drives, terminates just inside of the free throw line, and the traveling stalls against Clifton at the left wing. Clifton had a shot, but he debated on whether to shoot it, dribble it, and it ended up traveling with it. Just a young sophomore, played quarterback for the Sharks this year on their football squad. They got a lot of talent, both of these squads, a lot of talented athletes. Dakota, the up and under move from the right block. And the biggest lead of the game for Aptos is six. Dakota, again, you get down inside, and that's where Aptos is really killing St. Francis. Down low on the boards, whether it's Dakota, Montoya, or Harrell. Open three, rims out for Yee. And a long rebound for the Mariners. Might be timeout time soon for Ed Kelly on the St. Francis bench. This team down six, with one minute remaining in the first half. Still a lot of time on the shot clock. Aptos can take their time, but Segoda says, no, I'm gonna go right down the middle on it, and we're gonna get a charging call. And that's where the youthful aggression sometimes comes up and bites you. You have plenty of time. The lane was there, but the Sharks did a nice job. It is closing right out in the middle. There's Clifton on one side, Figueroa taking the bulk of that collision, so the Sharks are gonna be able to get this. Turnovers, Tim, have really hurt the Aptos Mariners here in the first two quarters of play. So there's just about a 20-second shot clock, game clock differential. Burkett takes the inbound pass, picked up full court by Montoya. Double teamed, in fact. And it forces a turnover. Well collects it. Dakota with contact, count the basket in the foul as Burkett's called for his second foul, just a blocking foul, and Sakoto with back-to-back -back baskets. He is what Aptos likes. Nice lead pass down there on the side. Look to the far side, draw contact, not a lot, but just enough for the official to blow the whistle. Good body control, nice easy bucket. And a very nice free throw from John Sakoto. Matthews picked up the foul. That's the sixth team foul with 40 seconds remaining. Burkett gives up his dribble. And St. Francis against this hard defense. You see Coach Smith on the top left of your screen is urging his team to play some aggressive defense. Burkett straight away, a long three. And he cuts it to a six point game with 20 seconds and the shot clock dead in the second quarter. Aptos now is gonna look for that great percentage shot. Harrell would be the first one, number 22. Victory gonna take his time. We've got nine seconds to go, so he's gonna have to start moving for it now. Victory with four seconds. Sakota had that one knocked out of his hands. Two seconds remaining in the first half. Good defense by the Sharks. Great defense by the Sharks. Forcing the ball to stay outside, keeping their body on the Aptos Mariners. Harrell, fadeaway, 17 footers, no good. And that'll do it for the first half of play with the score. The Aptos Mariners 33, St. Francis is staying with them, 27. That's the score at the end of the first half. We'll be back after this with the rest of the CTV. We'll keep it here for the Aptos Mariners and St. Francis 33 to 27 after the first half of play. And uh, well, what are some of your 
first half thoughts, Kurt? Well, I'm definitely impressed with Jake Harrell. He's just done a fantastic job on the offensive side of the ball, making those nice little inside moves. Shows me some three-point take capability. But defensively, he's he's a working man's rebounder. He knows how to position himself for the rebound. He's able to kind of just figure out where he's going to be able to go to get it, and he does a great job. What's been killing the Mariners, folks, is the turnovers. And that's when the one thing that's been killing them, and I don't know how many they've got, but I know it's double digits. But that's going to come with this fast-paced offense that the Aptos Mariners run. Yeah, for Jake Carroll, he has 15 points in his first half. On the other side, Burkett's got seven, Matthews has got seven. That's about what we kind of expected coming into this game. Yeah, the Sharks tend to like to spread out their offense just a little bit more than, say, the Mariners, although the Mariners have got some guys that can go really well, too. They've got Wells, Sagota. Can, I mean, they've got a lot of guys who can score victory who just shot the lights out last last time he played. He's been stone cold. So you want to check out this game anytime you want. You can pop in your DVD player on your computer or on your big screen. DVD copies are available for this game for $25. Just go to communitytv.org slash dubs or call us. The number's right there, 831-425-8848. If you go to communitytv.org, we'll have that number for you as well. So we will step aside when we come back. We'll look at the first half highlights. Aptos 33, St. Francis 27 here in the first game of the week for basketball season here on CTV Sports. Back here at the half, Aptos leads St. Francis 33-27 in our CTV Game of the Week. With Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz. And Kurt, in this first half, it was an action-packed first half. And for both these teams, I'd say they were pretty satisfied with this first half. I think both coaches have got to be tremendously satisfied with each one. And here's the one mistake of the entire first half for Jay Carroll. He tried to go a little bit too quickly. St. Francis, this actually capped off a 6-0 run that made the game 6-6 to start out. But then, as you'll see, Jay Carroll had a monster first half. Ball goes inside to Harrell, and he's able to put it up. He works very well underneath the boards, and he runs the floor very well. And that's one thing that the Mariners love to do is get out on the wings and then run. And Harrell does that very, very well. Burkett on the other side, he likes to shoot the rock. And you can see him put it up there. He had seven points. Here's Harrell again. This was an and one. An acrobatic shot. He had 15 in the first half. He also nailed the three. Montoya, an off-balance shot. It was all the way out to an eight-point lead, a nine-point lead, in fact, at this point. But the last basket of the first half was a huge one for Burkett. Cut it from a nine-point game to our current score, 33-27, just a two-possession game. And that's huge. I mean, you, you still have two quarters to play, but it's very important that you, what you're going to be able to get. You, know, you, you want to have, you want to keep Aptos tight. When Aptos played Harbor, Harbor, it was it was over at halftime. When they played San Lorenzo Valley, it was over at halftime. Neither one of those other ball clubs could keep them tight. So it's very important, and the Sharks have done a great job of just keeping the Mariners, working hard for their shots. They're forcing the Mariners to do turnovers, and you can see by the score, 33 to 27 in 1862 in the year of our Lord. Original five for both teams, Figueroa, Burkett, Matthew, Salcedo, and Dave Ogilaire is the five for St. Francis. Montoya, Victory, Harrell, who has 15. Dakota with five, and Well are the five. There's an early turnover, and Montoya runs the fast break. Left wing for Victory. Swings right side, stepping into a three-pointer. Nice shot, but it's a little bit too strong for Well. And Harrell loses this ball out of bounds. Again, notice how aggressive St. Francis is underneath the basket. They really want to force Aptos to take that tough shot. They also want to get it in the hands of number five. Burkett, up and under move, nice give off. And Figueroa is partially blocked by Harrell. Ends up with the rebound. All the way to the hoop, Montoya leads it off. Well is blocked, but he's fouled. Now that's a very fortunate play for the Aptos Mariners, Tim. Harold does a nice job of digging the ball out and getting the ball up the floor to Montoya. The numbers are slightly against him. You can see that one. Great no-look pass. Credit Parker with following the ball down the court. He gets a foul, and he's going to end up going to the free throw. Excuse me, Wells is going to go to the free throw line. 
well with two free throws. Had just one basket in the first half, and he'll make the first free throw. I'll tell you, if you can make your free throws, Tim, in basketball, you've got a great opportunity to win almost every basketball game you're in. Both are good for well. Looks very good on both of them, too. Well, as you said, Cole last game had 15 points and seven rebounds, so he's a good workhorse. Young basketball player, just part of the very loaded group of basketball players for Aptos. Just two seconds across half court, and that's a backcourt violation. Jump ball's called, and Aptos will lose the arrow, but it should be a, a backcourt violation because the ball never crossed half courts, and there was no possession, and it is a 10-second violation. Yeah. Two officials, Dewey and Curtis, had a nice little conversation, and the correct call was made. i tell you one, buddy. Joey Smith was very demonstrative on trying to get that call, and he won. Harold shot is no good. Fade away will roll out. Well had the rebound, but it's knocked out of his hand by Burkett. And St. Francis comes down. You know, that's a big call, though, Kurt, because that's an extra possession that you get. Yeah, it is. Watch Burkett. He jammed a finger or a hand in that last time down. He's shaking his right hand. He's... See how that's going to affect his, either his passing or his shooting capabilities. Okay, his or right he... thumb. Matthews, open three, buries it. Aiden Matthews, he's the first shark in the double figures. Five point game, minute and a half into the third quarter, and St. Francis is not going anywhere. No, they're gonna stay right with it. I'm beginning to wonder right now whether that game against San Lorenzo Valley was just an offensive fluke for the Sharks. Only scoring 33 points. I know that Scotts Valley has a good defense. Montoya picks up the offensive rebound, and he will roll in. A nice eight-footer in the middle of the lane. Got, got, a little, got a little shooter's roll on now. When it looked like he was caught between, do I just want to try and drop it right on in the bucket, or do I want to use it as a bank? We're about ready to get a basketball in our front laps. Burkett saves it in front of Kurt. The very athletic Kurt Edwards. Uh, are you talking to me? <laughs> I am. All right. <laughs> Must be my twin brother twice removed. Matthews, step back three, nothing but nets. Aiden Matthews, back-to-back -back threes, and it's a four-point game. And that's what they're going to have to do is start to hit those threes, see if they can at, get Aptos to come out and get them, and then start going back in that inside game. Victory underneath Harrell's fouls. And with 5.22 remaining in the third, Jake Harrell, who was two for five at the line in the first half, gets two more cracks at him. Burkett gets a whack at him, although, again, he can go underneath. Figueroa could have easily also gotten that foul called on him. So it's where the official is looking and who's got the more damaging foul, I guess, is Harrell makes the first one of two. Well right there. and he, I like watching him play basketball. He hustles, he moves, he works to get in position all the time. Second free throw. Uh, Harrell, I think, was fooling us. He missed his first three, and his last four free throws have all been perfect. He's got 17 points, six-point lead for the Mariners. Here's one thing you don't want to do, Tim. You don't want to pull your dribble up that far underneath or on your own side. Figueroa will not Great. beat the 10-second call. You pull that basketball up and stop your dribble, that 10 seconds is starting to count. Now some of your players are going to have to come back and help you out. Chances of making that long pass, and there's Ed Kelly, the very veteran, very talented, and very good basketball coach for the Sharks, yelling a few words of encouragement, or at least correcting somebody. Six-point lead for the Mariners here at home. Two and one in league. St. Francis, one and two. The number four and five teams in the SCCAL thus far. Victory, long three. Can't get it going yet. Had seven threes in his last game, has yet to nail one yet. Montoya somehow keeps that one in bounds. Dakota dishes underneath. Well, counted him a foul. Great patience, great discipline by number 44. Cole Well, watch him. He's going to out on side, look at wrap around. He's getting beat up inside, but he keeps his eye right on the backboard. He uses the glass, banks it in. So many times, Tim, young basketball players just try and arch it over the top of that 10 foot high rim, and they end up missing it. Not Cole. He says, I'm going to use that backboard because somebody put it up there for my benefit. 
Well, nice game with seven points. Five of them here in the second half. Nine point lead for Aptos. Right elbow jumper for Figueroa, too strong. Rebound ends up with Harrell and a three on one. Well is gonna collect it from Montoya. He lays it in. I think it's timeout time for Ed Kelly. He's gonna have to look for one really quick. He's gonna do a substitution, but that was good, that was good offensive play by the Mariners. Watch the Mariners play very aggressive defense. They're gonna try and force the Sharks out as far as they can. Burkett going one on one. Back cut pass for Matthews to the far corner. Ball's knocked out of his hands by Harrell with 4.03 remaining in the third quarter. Just 16 on the shot clock and a substitution. Checking in John Russo. I really am surprised, Tim, and you mentioned that I thought that the Sharks were going to go for a timeout. They really don't want this game to slip away. They're down by 11 at this point in time with four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Burkett loses this ball, but a foul called Sakota. A little bit of a push. It's going to be the first team foul of the second half against the Mariners. Yeah, watch Sakota on the offensive end who made that nice pass to Well. He got out there, starts to go out. The defense goes and forces him. Well doing a nice job of just continuing to work his way down inside the paint. Found himself with a great opportunity, and he did do well. Got the bucket. Andrade into the game for the first time in the second half for the Mariners. And checking back in for St. Francis, Ricky Carrera, who had a nice first half with three points. Matthews wide open, rhythm three near corner, no good. Rebound tipped out, and the Sharks will collect it. Jumper up to the net. Dave Ogalere. Back in the single digits at nine. Dave Ogalere is, again, one of those types of kids that you, you don't he shows up at the right place at the right time. He's a good hard worker. Victory, short. Rebound back to victory. Harrell, his second three attempt is short. And the rebound to St. Francis. DeVogelari going to go all the way down the hoop himself. This is it off for Burkett. Burkett, I don't think he's going to get a blow the rest of this one. Now he's going to be in it for the duration. And one thing all of the guards do on both of these clubs, they push the ball all the way down the floor as far as they can. Harrell is fouled hard underneath the basket by Matthew. Good foul by Matthews. That's it. If you're yeah. going to, this is an easy layup for Harrell. You, he's already proven he can make that one. It's the charity stripe that he sometimes struggles at, although he made the first two that he had here in the third quarter of play. So make that, if you've got a foul to give, give that foul. Both these teams 10 and 5 coming into this game. Harrell makes the first free throw. And he, as we mentioned, he started out missing his first three freebies, but he's made his last five. But I think these are two different 10 and 5. Daptos played a much more difficult non league schedule. They, they did a nice job by Burkett just screening off well. Burkett, the guard slash forward slash center, just takes it down himself. He takes a hard foul. That's the second against Daptos. Jake Harrell picks up the foul. It's his first personal. He sees that opening. He goes right on through it. And the, the Aptos Mariners then converge on him just as he starts to get underneath the net. But they don't establish their position. So as contact is made by Burkett, the charging foul, the, excuse me, blocking foul is called. Burkett with two. Makes the first. <laughs> Shooter's rotation. You like to see that nice backspin coming right off the fingertips. I, last shot that uh, Victory threw up looked like that one was coming more off the center of his hand and his palm, so he wasn't getting a good rotation on the ball. And Birkin stays perfect at the free throw line tonight. Nine points, eight point lead for Aptos. St. Francis has really stayed in this contest. And they've done it from the charity stripe and their aggressive style of defense. Harrell, turnaround, short. Burkett collects the board. Watch Burkett, he comes down the floor under control, kept looking behind him, he doesn't want to have the ball punched out of his hands. Straight away, three, just it's off the right side of the iron, and victory, smallest player on the floor, collects the rebound. Montoya pulls up, nails it, the lost start of the pull-up jumper. Justin Montoya in double figures. 10-point lead for Aptos. Layup on the other side, though, for Trey E. Hey. 
Aptos is gonna try and move it. I like how they just open up the lanes just by their offensive movement without the basketball. Heads up play by Montoya after he missed the shot. Yi had the rebound low. He grabbed it. There is the significance of Coach Smith asking for a 10 second violation earlier in this quarter as opposed to the alternating possessions because now he gets the ball. Yeah, it was good heads up by Coach Smith. That's why they pay him the $1.22 a game. Jack, Jack, Jack. Farrell misses his first attempt. He misses his second as well. Watch Montoya play defense. Keeps the body right in front. Good job. Hands were out there. Good athleticism. Pull up. Left elbow. Way out of control from Carrera. Farrell with the rebound. Victory one on two. Pushes DSU, puts it up, no good, but a foul called against Carrera. That's the second time he's fallen on his backside after trying to take a charge and not gotten the call. He didn't quite get set. Watch Victory come down the right. There's Carrera, he continues to move, he's sliding, he doesn't have his feet set. That's gonna be your blocking foul. If he can set up, get both feet set, be in a permanent location, then the charge foul could have been called against Victory. Victory, nothing been down on his first free throw. But I had applaud victory. I thought Danny was going to pass that ball off because I didn't see where he was going to be able to come in. But he noticed that his opponent continued to move backwards, so he continued to charge the basket. Under 100 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 10-point lead at home for Aptos. Burkett gave up his dribble to the near side, gets the ball back, thought about a 24-footer, swings it right side for Yield. Reset to Carrera up top. Carrera dribbles it left on victory. Looks for a screen. Burkett asked to bring it up top. He'll still get it. Still plenty of time, Tim. 10 on the shot clock. Burkett off balance in the lane with contact, no good. Saves the ball and then just throws it off the wall. They got to throw it off something. But I was watching Burkett and he was looking for that shot. And as the shot clock goes down, you know, the, as you start to play basketball more, you can take that sneak peek and realize you have time to work with. Burkett still has about eight, nine seconds to go on that shot clock to get a better shot off. Left wing. Parker just came into the game. Harrell throws it up. Blocking foul is called against Matthews. I'll tell you, that a lot of Sharks have been hitting the deck and getting the blocking foul. Watch Harrell come over. Same type of situation we saw before with Carrera. Still sliding over, trying to get in position. Harrell continues his motion right towards the basket. He gets the blocking foul call against his opponent, and he gets to the charity stripe. Harrell misses the first. Adam Truman is in the game for the first time for St. Francis, wearing number 12 in the maroon jersey. Harrell, second attempt. Good. Well, in this quarter, Harrell's done nothing but shoot the free throw. He doesn't have a field goal yet. Burkett trouble crossing half court. He will to Truman. Truman double teams. Timeout out Kelly. See, that's where as, as these young ball players continue to play basketball, they can realize that they're in trouble and call timeout on their own or have one of their fellow people come and call timeouts. Let's see what Coach Kelly's got to say. Yeah, listen. I, can't, I gotta have him down here, guys. You guys down there. So when they double, Will can throw it out to you, okay? Um, hey, listen. Uh, who's in right now? Okay, here we go. Let's go. Run triangle out of bounds. One shot. Let's go. One, two, three. Sharks. There was 14 seconds left. I tell you, Tim, when they were talking about double team and they got that time, that that timeout over there on the side, you double team on the sidelines. You've now basically triple team because you have walled that person in. And unless he can jump over the top and get a a leaping pass on in, it's very difficult. So that's one of the things you force your opponent to the sidelines quickly. Get in a double team. Working with fouls. And this is the second personal against Harold, the 13th right foul. Already in the bonus, the Aptos Mariners with 16 fouls against St. Francis. That'll kill the shot clock, too, with 35 
seconds, less than 35 seconds, 34.5. Burkett still gonna take a wild shot with 25 seconds remaining in the half. St. Francis looks like they're in the regular offense. They do, and they have to realize that, you know, back it out, and finally, Coach Kelly is telling them, you know, start swarming a play. You've got 13 seconds to go. Burkett looking at the game clock, and he's going to start going right about now. It's about seven seconds left to go. Looking for the last shot. Burkett off balance. As time expires, cannot hit the shot. An app toss with a half century. 39 for St. Francis here at the end of three of game one of our two game doubleheader here on CTV Sports. Now that time Aptos outscored the uh, Sharks by 17 to 12. And that's the type of thing that Aptos likes to do, start to move it away. But you saw a little bit of an undisciplined offensive style, trying to force that shot up. You've got the last shot of the half. You might as well take advantage of it and run a good play. We remind you, DVD sales and DVD copies of this broadcast are available for $25. Go to communitytv.org slash dubs or call us at 831-425-8848. And uh, you want to make sure to get this DVD out to your family if you're watching this game or if you ever want to see it again. We'll take a look at... Burkett, when he had a nice take to the rack. He tried He's, to keep it in. He tries, his, I'll tell you one thing, watching him play and Harold play, they're two, they're a little bit different in build, but boy, they play similar styles. They like to go to the basket. They're not afraid to shoot the ball. They'll go underneath and mix it up pretty well. While I've got a chance, I'd like to thank the Aptos uh, High School Athletic Department, Mark Dorfman, Athletic Director for their Kindness to let us come in here a little bit early and set up and get ready for tonight's games. The Sharks inbound the ball. They need to make up points. They need to make them up in a hurry. Down by 11. Just the eight-minute quarters here in high school. Reminder, we'll have game two of our doubleheader, the girls' game between Aptos and St. Francis. The last time St. Francis played here, they won an SCCAL championship. And a wild win over SoCal. The ball's knocked out of play, and it'll go to Aptos. Matt Clifton, number 15, in for the Sharks. Doing battle underneath, gets the ball knocked out of bounds. Let's see if, I doubt Aptos will slow the tempo down. It's just not in Coach Smith's nature to do that. Victory underneath from Montoya. Left side, Parker, victory straight away. NBA range, nailed his first three in the contest. Yeah, that's seven points for victory, and Aptos continues to put the pressure on. They let the ball come in. That's Parker with the steal. And he just missed the easy lane. He tried to keep it in as he was falling down. And he just kind of was falling and couldn't keep his balance. And that was kind of an unfortunate situation for him. So the ball would have to us. Victory going to take it out of bounds. Let's see if he forced the Adams would have saved. Bring it into the big man. While they were setting up, the one thing I did notice that Jake Jake Harrell was doing is he set his position down low. The shark was right behind him, so he was in good position to get that inbound pass and either back up, get the shot off, or be fouled. Harrell misses the first. And the second is in, and Harold's up to 20 points. If he'd make all of his free throws, he'd be at 25 by now. And Harold, seven for 13 at the line. Is he out of bounds, so. That was a seventh team foul, too, on St. Francis. You see Coach Smith fired up for this entire game. Oh, he doesn't sit down. He, he goes all the way. Out of bounds. Yeah, Yee tried to bounce that to Figueroa, and it was out of bounds. I'm trying to remember how many times I saw Harold sit down in this game, and I can't think of maybe just more than one. Parker up the left wing. Moving away from the ball for the Mariners. Harold looking for the ball coming on top. Oh. 
Now watch the Atos Mariners defense. They'll let the ball come in. Yep, they did test it to contest it this time. It's a 15 point lead for the Aptos Mariners at home with 640 remaining. Another steal. Montoya swings left side. Victory. Rhythm three. Short. Parker went up for the ball and tipped it out of bounds for the rebound. Victory had a nice clean shot and Montoya doing a nice job. Cross court pass, not always advisable. But when you've got a wide open victory, who's known to be able to hit his three points, make that pass. And then you've got all those Aptos Mariners underneath the board and they're getting ready to go for the rebound. Andrade sits down for the Mariners. Pereira kind of going the wrong way. Now looks like he was about to meet a double team. He's got a hurry, just beats the 10 second call again. Burkett, right wing. St. Francis down by 15, two minutes into the fourth. Now remember, Tim, this is St. Francis' third game of the week. So they could, their legs may be starting to fall off from underneath them a little bit. And if you're going to be a good shooter in basketball or just any type of sports, you want to make sure that your legs are nice and strong. And they just fell to Scotts Valley 36-33. They were down with under three minutes by nine points. They came back. Aiden Matthews missed a three as time expired, and that's what uh, was the difference between a win and a victory, or a win and a loss, excuse me, against the Vikings. Shot clock violation. Gonna have to throw a desperation up every once in a while. But that's the great tenacious defense that the Aptos Mariners bring every time you play them. Mariners are two and one. Their only loss is against Santa Cruz. And that was a 69-48 loss to the Cardinal. Victory blocked out of bounds. Burkett just rejected him. He tried to go through the middle. The seas parted for a second, but quickly the help defense came from St. Francis. And you got that call exactly right. You saw the opening at the top of the key, shot right on through it. But was not the, but then the big guy said, no, not in here. 23 seconds on the shot clock. Victory for Sakota Travis. Now in the NBA, they don't call that. No. College, 50-50. High school, all the time. Nice little jump stop right out in front of us. in the near wing. I like the fact that motion continues to go on for the Sharks. Burkett just outside of the three-point range. No good. Montoya, very nice slasher. It's no good. Wells left hand, Chuck up, no good. That was almost knocked in by St. Francis. Finally, Harold takes it over, and he's gonna be called for a, a blocking foul with Yi in the one and one for Harold with just a notch below, five minutes left. 54-39, Sharks are trailing here at Aptos High School. To give you an idea, an idea at least, how Aptos was playing on that one. They've got that big lead, now just inside five minutes to go. Harold had the ball outside. Brand new shot clock, 35 seconds. He could have backed it out, got a nice percentage shot instead of this one-on-one -on -one that he just made the first one on. But he decided to press the issue and go in for a bucket. The second for Harold. Burkett going to sit down for the Sharks. He has been up and down the floor and occasionally on it. Harold goes one for two. And the lead's been extended to 16. He wide open three. No good. He gets his own rebounds and will get a shooter's roll from eight feet away. He's got eight points, four in the first, four in the second half. He just killed that ball right up there and just let it roll right on in. Again, let's see how Aptos goes. This right across. Montoya is looking for some kind of a cutter to go across the key. Harold just steals it away. Smooth land. Jake Harold, 23 points. 
Jake saw the opportunity and took it and took it again. Harrell all the way to the hoop. It's no good, but a blocking foul underneath against Salcedo. Salcedo saw that I'm going to deny him the opportunity to go right to the basket. Quick hands. Good job, steals it away. Salcedo says, I'm going to get a blocking foul, I know that, but I'm not going to give him that easy bucket. What Harrell also had on the other side, if he wanted to do it, was victory coming in on that side. So he could have passed that ball up to victory, who would have had a nice, easy layup. One final push, guys. Get on the One final push here. Gotta keep up the D. Jason, great job. Let's go, make these foul shots. Use your legs. Oh, Put them in, Jake. Use your legs. Make them dribble. Wait. Right. You know the formula, right? I just have to see. Good deep breath. Relax. Jake, use your legs and follow through on your foul shot. So nice sneak peek into the huddle for Coach Joey Smith. 57 41 is the score. Here at Aptos High School, along with Kurt Edwards, I'm Kim Swartz for our CTV Game of the Week. And in the future, we'll have some other great games. Harbor and Scotts Valley. Uh, Scotts Valley's girls team in their division is one of the top probably 10 teams in the state. Santa Cruz and Soquel, that's a potential battle for first with both those teams undefeated in the league thus far. And finally, the SCCAL Championships. And that'll be held right here at Aptos High School. You heard Coach Smith, they were in the huddle talking to Jake, saying, okay, shoot your free throws, but use your legs. Drive right up through, right through the shot. Theoretically, it's supposed to go in. But he was about a half an inch too short. Hit the front of the, front of the rim. It's been 50-50 for Harrell at the free throw line. Eight for 16. Makes the second. 24 points. And again, the Mariners not backing off. The big people up underneath. Nice play by Harrell. He's going to get fouled and go to the charity stripe. But you can see the quickness that he has with his hands. And he has that because he's in good defensive position. Passes over there. He's anticipating the pass. A little behind the back. Harlem Globetrotters of old. Or Pete Maravich of my day. Pistol Pete before the three-point line. Yep. There were some long bomb shooters back in the day of the NBA in the 60s and the 70s that probably would have been had two or three or four thousand more points had there been the three point line. Maravich having to be one of them. Harold misses the first. He has been to the free throw line ten times. Still four minutes left in this game. Uh, he'll be there again just by the way he works underneath to get the basketball. Joey Smith going to use his full timeouts. 59-41, Aptos, their biggest lead of the game. They, they just led by six to the half. But they've really pushed out this lead. Uh, they've won the second half by 12 points so far. As we just mentioned it, there are the games we'll have in our future here on CTV. Harbor and Scotts Valley, that will be fun. You already mentioned Santa Cruz and SoCal, Bill Domhoff and Stu Walters. Longtime friends, and they just love to go at each other. And they're always popular, and we have a great time doing it, SCCAL championships. Well, just mentioning it, Kurt, first half was won by six points by Aptos. Second half, they've doubled that winnage, winning it by 12, so they're up by 18. What have they done differently in the second half? Well, they've actually done better. They've gone inside more with their shots. And they're starting to win more at the free throw line than they were the first time. But the big thing is they started to limit their turnovers. Their turnovers have gone down here in the second half. And the Sharks' turnovers have actually started to increase. There's so St. Francis girls sitting down there in the corner. Yeah, last time they were here, we mentioned it was a double overtime win. Very exciting ball game. And you see the fans. They love being on CTV. They do. And they're kicked back in the nice, comfortable bleachers here at the Aptos High School. It is the, 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 I think we could say this without bias, maybe the best facility, you think, in the SCCAL? Hands down. The only other one that may come up within some kind of a reach would be uh, the one up in Scotts Valley. But I'll take the bleachers here over the bleachers in Scotts Valley. Long pass. And a clean block underneath by Well as he is rejected. Leave Ogilary. 
Devogel Larry did a nice breakaway, but he had to wait for that pass. Well didn't do anything, he just kept his hand up there. And Devogel Larry just shot it right up into his hand. Figueroa with contact, gets the basket. And he'll get a chance for a three-point play with 4-0-1 remaining. Well, one thing that the Sharks want to be able to do, that they're down by 16 now, is close, you know, keep playing aggressive basketball. Fight all the way to the end, because you know, as coaches, we want our athletes to continue to do that, but show the Mariners that there's a lot of fight in them, and this is the first of uh, two games that these teams will see each other, to say, hey, you may have us right now, but we can come back and make this game close. Harold into the lane. Bank shot good. Burkett had a little bit of a, a gamble trying to go for the steal. Harold is beating the basket. Yeah, right now that's what St. Francis is going to have to do is take more gambles, go for the ball, but after us you can see the defense Montoya using the body. Burkett is rejected in the lane by Harold. Harold though is out of bounds he touches the ball up. 3.30 to go and a big lead by the Mariners, but you watch them play defense and you would not think that this lead is 17 points. 3.30 remaining. Burkett, hook shot is short. Rebound is kicked out to victory. Looks like Montoya may have inadvertently kicked that one. Now, not a deliberate, the officials will let it play ball. Good job by victory. Slow the pace down, make sure his offensive compadres are down there ready to do something. Carroll on the cut. Near wing for Well. Still a lot of time on the shot clock. Montoya has that one knocked away. Burkett. High, high up in the air with this pass. Bounce down. Figueroa will lay it up and good. That was a rainmaker pass that actually almost hit the lights up here. It was. Great job by Saucedo to get that ball and see Figueroa coming down and do a nice little bounce pass with his back to his uh, running mate. Fifteen point lead for Aptos at home. Stay with us. Our next game will feature the girls of Aptos and the girls of St. Francis. Victory. Step back. Three. Short. Maybe should have stepped forward on that shot. Perkin loses this ball off of his foot. And Sakota all the way to the hoop. He's fouled by Russo. There's no doubt that through these young players' playing career and the coaches that they have had through AAU ball and here at the high school level, they see a gap right there in the defense. You exploit it. Sakota did that one. You're either going to get the layup in and the foul, but you're definitely going to get to the charity stripe for the opportunity to make two. First free throw is good for Sakota. And the second is off the front of the iron, rebounded by Clifton. Almost, almost hit that line. Hand check against the Mariners, 62 46, 147 remaining. And Joey Smith, I think, can call the dogs off with. Three substitutions. Justin Colena. Along with Andrade, who was in the first half. And Ryan Reyes will come in. Carroll will check out with 26 points. Ball's lost. And Kurt Edwards gets to show his handles as the ball yeah. came up to our table. Balls is coming at a really slow pace, I'm fine. Yeah, the Mariners are just doing your wholesale changes. Great job by that starting unit and uh, about three or four good substitutions. You can see that they play 
a good, solid basketball game together. You've got, it's got, the Mariners have a good feel as far as the team is concerned. Ball is tipped out and loose. Mariners pick up the rebounds with another new player, Chris Galvin, 5'8 guard, junior. A little bit of a far side for Salona, who's a 5'7 junior. Up top, Brett Breckwitz. Just run the offense, run the pattern. That's what Coach Smith wants them to see. If you get an opportunity, shoot it. Salona, the 5'7 senior. Pours it in, 19 point lead for Aptox. Aiden Truman over to the left wing, drives left baseline, releases to Aiden Matthews. Matthews, off balance three, is no good. And the rebound to the Mariners, 50 seconds remaining. A 19 second shot clock, game clock differential. Matthews with his stealing. And a lay it up again. Shot clock is dead. 30 seconds remaining. Matthews going for that second steal. Mariners are just going to let it roll. Target in the corner. Watch the Sharks. They're going to continue to play basketball. All the way to the hoop, the shot is no good, but the putback for Andrade is good. And there's just five seconds left. The final shot is nailed by the Sharks, but that will do it here from Aptos High School. The Aptos Mariners take the boys game 67-50 over the St. Francis Sharks. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll have the highlights of this one and a preview of the girls game. You're watching the game of the week here on Community Television. Final here from Aptos High School. The Mariners defeat St. Francis 67-50 in the Boers portion of our doubleheader here on CTV Sports. With Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swart. Great game for the Aptos Mariners. St. Francis kept it close to the six-point game at the half. But in the second half, this is how it went down for the Aptos Mariners. They early on were having some trouble. In fact, this game was down to less than a five-point lead. Now Matthews hauls off right from the get-go and bombs away for a three-point line. But the Mariners are going to start taking control again. And Vogelera also with three. But now watch Montoya. He works his way right into the paint. Nice, easy touch on the basket all the way through. And Victory, who had a sizzling day last time out against San Lorenzo Valley, finally drops in his first three point from way out yonder. And now you watch big number 22, big Jake. Nice, easy layup. Goes back to set himself up on defense and whoop, and he end up with another ball. Steal, and he's gonna go to the charity stripe. That bucket does not count. Ready? And you're gonna watch a little bit from the Knights. Watch Salcedo. Nice little no-look pass to Figueroa. Easy layup, but it was a game set match by the end of the third quarter. Yeah, and I, I do think, I don't think I know <laughs> our player of the game, Jake Harrell, who ended up with 26 points tonight. He had a day offensively, he had a day defensively. Great job by big number 22. And I think we look at coming into the, the rest of the season, we'll see some other teams, but for Aptos, it's a statement they belong in the top half of the SCCAO. They do, definitely. So once again, the final in this contest for the boys, 67 to 50, Aptos defeats St. Francis.